Welcome everyone to episode 101 of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com. Getting back into the swing of things. This past week I decided to experiment a little bit. I did a few single topic videos. Now, to be honest with you, I was considering dropping the No DQ and A video and just sticking to text version, but I've decided uh, for the foreseeable future I'm going to keep doing the No DQ and A videos and do the text versions and perhaps every once in a while throw in a random single topic video if there's something significant to talk about so let me know what you think about that idea uh, leave a comment send me send me some feedback and uh, let's get right down to your questions do you think the WWE needs better writers they come up with uh, good storylines but at the same time they don't go to the right direction with it like the Kane and John Cena storyline it was interesting at first but now it's boring you have to look at it this way John Cena is facing The Rock at WrestleMania 28, and uh, Rock's not going to start appearing on Raw until the end of the month. So WWE's idea was let's put John Cena in a program with somebody else, and at the same time, use that feud to help build up WrestleMania. So John Cena's in there with Kane. Kane's uh, mentioning the embrace the hate and trying to get Cena into the dark side or whatever, and kind of playing up on WrestleMania, like how is Cena going to beat The Rock if he's not able to embrace the hate? So... Um, the storyline, it's had its good moments, it, it's had its bad moments, definitely, especially anything with Eve involved. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, but it is what it is, and uh, I think it's a fine program leading up to WrestleMania, and uh, we'll see what happens at the ambulance match at Elimination Chamber. Speaking of that, who are your favorites to win at Elimination Chamber this year? I think it'll be Orn and Jericho to set up the title matches at WrestleMania. Your thoughts? Based on Raw this week, it, it definitely looks like Chris Jericho is going to win the Raw Elimination Chamber, and uh, from a storyline perspective, that's what makes sense. I mean, Jericho is going to be the last man in the match, and um, perhaps you could do it where CM Punk is the first guy to enter the chamber, and he has to go through everybody, and at the very end, Jericho beats him, and then uh, CM Punk has to try to win back the title WrestleMania 28. So, I mean, from a logic standpoint, that, that's what makes sense to me. Uh, perhaps they'll go in a different direction to be unpredictable, but um, I'd like to see that happen. I think that's a, a good way to go. And uh, regarding the SmackDown Elimination Chamber, I guess it's always possible that Orn wins and then you do Orn versus Sheamus, but um, I, I don't know. I, I think there's always the chance that Daniel Bryan's going to retain since everyone's expecting him to lose. So uh, you can know you could have him somehow slip through the cracks again. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they. You know, they keep playing up. There's no way Brian can uh, get his get himself out of this one. So perhaps he will. Perhaps he'll find a way, and then they'll do Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan, which, as a lot of people have noted, uh, it would be ironic since at last year's WrestleMania they were going to fight, but then it uh, was held off the pay-per-view card. So that would be interesting, and uh, I think that would be a really good match, Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan. I would like to see it. What did you think of Big Boss Man as a wrestler? Really good for a big man, and... Uh, Quite a good promo, too. I mean, Boss Man could talk. He he, he could uh, be pretty agile in there for a guy his size. And I remember the Hulk Hogan versus Big Boss Man steel cage match uh, on Saturday night's main event. I thought it was really good uh, for a Hulk Hogan match. I mean, it was just uh, very intense. And uh, they did the big superplex off the top. And for two 300-plus pound guys, it looked really impressive. And... Um, you know, Boss Man's also been in some funny storylines like with Al Snow and that dreaded kennel for hell. But I always remember the segment where uh, Boss Man fed Al Snow's dog Pepper to him. And uh, yeah, just uh, and who can forget the feud with Big Show with uh, Boss Man uh, bringing out the coffin and Big Show body surfing the coffin. Uh, so Boss Man's been in some funny segments. He's been in some serious segments. He was just an all around very entertaining performer. So uh, definitely missed. Do you agree WrestleMania 21 had the potential to be the best ever? Fantastic opener, best Money in the Bank match ever, great match for Taker and Orton, my favorite match ever with HBK and Angle, two awesome segments with Piper's Pit and Hogan moment with Hassan, ending worst ever. Agree with you 100%, and uh, I think I've mentioned this probably a half dozen times now because I get asked about it a lot. Um, I was at WrestleMania 21 Live, and yeah, up until the last three matches, Big Show, Aki Bono, John Cena, JBL, and Triple H versus Batista, I thought it was among the best WrestleManias of all time. 
and then it just completely fell off a cliff. Big Show and Akibono was pointless, waste of time for Big Show. And um, it's not like he was in there with Mayweather or Shaq or, you know, a big name in the U.S., so it really meant nothing. And uh, it did nothing for Big Show to be there in the diapers or whatever it was. I don't even know. And then uh, John Cena versus JBL. I've mentioned this before. The only time I've been in a WWE event and I actually started dozing off. It was that dull. It was your typical SmackDown main event match. It, it really had no place on pay-per-view. And uh, Triple H versus Batista was an okay match, but also a letdown. And uh, I think their Hell in a Cell match a few months after that was much better. And, uh, you know, I just felt that they should have done more considering it was WrestleMania. Why does WWE give good people these goofy gimmicks and then mock them years later on TV shows and their website? They are obviously to blame for these dumb gimmicks, but they make fun of the actual person that was told to portray the character. Well, you're referencing the, the WWE YouTube show, Are You Serious? Not bro, just Are You Serious? And, uh, yeah, it kind of sounds like bullying, doesn't it? But WWE doesn't do bullying. They they tell you to be a star. They don't they they tell you to uh, not embrace the hate or whatever or whatever that crap is that they talk about. So uh, yeah, kind of kind of interesting. I was just watching Fully Loaded 2000 and I was wondering what what was your what was your was of the show? Okay, well, I think you're saying what were your thoughts on the show? It was quite solid, in my opinion. I was impressed by every match and the steel cage IC title match between Rikishi and Val Venus, and it was surprisingly entertaining. I agree with you. That was a really underrated pay-per-view, I think. I don't hear people talk about Fully Loaded 2000 all that much, but yeah, top to bottom, that was a really good card from WWE, and uh, I remember it being a big step up from King of the Ring. I thought King of the Ring that year was a big disappointment, other than Kurt Angle winning. But, um, yeah, that pay-per-view, top, top to bottom, really good. And that was, I think, the first pay-per-view of the Mick Foley regime. And, uh, yeah, just a great period in WWE in general. And, yeah, they just had great wrestling, great great crowd heat, everything you could ask for. All right, that'll do it for today's edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks for watching, as always. Make sure you sub subscribe, youtube.com slash no DQ And stay tuned for more videos right here on NoDQ.com.